So you ever try to avoid people that are hurting? I mean, maybe not like on purpose, like you're just trying to be mean or, you know, just insensitive or anything like that, but you just kind of are, are, are on a mission or you're just doing something, man, and it just seems like that's just an interruption you don't need right now. Um, you know, we, me and my wife are on, uh, we're on a road trip, right? And, uh, and this happens a lot, you know, you, you go on a road trip and you go to a town that you haven't been to for a while, but... You know, no matter where you go, you're going to find hurting people. You're going to see them. And we're cruising along, man, and we're, we got out and we started walking in this little square, little market square. It's kind of cool. And, um, and there was this guy out there just polishing these rocks. It was kind of weird, but he was just polishing these rocks, man. And he was working really hard at it, but they were just regular rocks. I mean, they weren't even anything significant. They weren't like killer turquoise or anything crazy. And he was trying to sell them for like 100 bucks. And, uh, and the guy was like, he looked like he hadn't had a bath in a long time. Looked like he hadn't eaten for a while. You know, but me and my wife, man, we're trying to have a good time, right? You know what I'm talking about. You know, we're just trying to roll. We're trying not to be interrupted. And um, I kind of listened to his story for a while, but I just wasn't about to just give him $100 for a rock. You know what I mean? I just wanted to do that. So I made my own excuse, you know what I mean, by saying, you know what? I ain't paying $100 for a rock. We're going to keep moving. And I didn't even, you know, I knew I could have thought, I could have been more creative, but I didn't choose to be. You know, it's kind of crazy because here at home, when I'm at home, you know, I, I, I have resources available. I know, right, I'm not gonna give you $100 for a dang rock, but I can take you over here to the recenter. I can bring you by the church. I can take you, in, you know, I can set you up with some services, whatever the case may be. It just seems different when you're on vacation or when you're out, running around, man, because the, in a town that's not yours, maybe because you're just not ready for it. And I think the reason I wasn't ready for it is because I didn't choose to be ready for it. And see, that's the thing. You see, back in the day, there were a bunch of uh, God's people. They were the Israelites. And in Isaiah, there, there, there's this prophet was writing to them. And, uh, you know, the voice of God through this man, Isaiah, was saying, look, man, you guys are tripping because, and I'm paraphrasing, obviously, you guys are tripping because you're doing all these prayer practices and you don't think God is answering. You're fasting, you know what I mean? And you don't see God answering. You're, you're covering yourself, you know, you're humbly covering yourself in ashes and stuff and sackcloth. This calls this weird terminology, all right? But you're doing all these things, man, and, and you don't think God is answering. And God says, check this out. You're, you know what? You're not paying attention to the real thing. Here's exactly what he says. He says, you know, is this not the prayer fast that I, that, that I choose to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Now listen to this part. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? To bring the homeless and poor into your house? And when you see the naked, to cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh. We were just reading that the other day, me and my wife, and we're like, man, I feel like, you know, when we go on vacation, and this is just me, it's not her, this is me, I feel like when we go on vacation, you know what? I'm also taking a vacation from my involvement and proximity to the poor and the hurting. And that shouldn't be the case. You know, just because I'm a quote unquote professional Christian or whatever the case, whatever you want to call it, when I go on vacation, you can't really take a vacation from what God's doing in the world, no matter where you're at. And so we, my wife and I were kind of trying to come up with this plan. We haven't perfected it yet, but we're trying to come up with this plan. Because like I said, at home, we're ready for it. We're ready to help and, and to find out how we can, you know, connect the hurting to some healing. We're ready for it. But we need, we're starting to figure out how can we develop a plan to like when we leave, when we go on vacation, or we're just out and about in different states, different cities, road trips, whatever, how can we also still be ready to encounter the hurting and to connect the hurting to some healing? Now, I don't have a lot of answers for you right now, but mainly it's just a challenge because this, this, this last phrase right here, not hide yourself from your own flesh, that's a big deal, man. That kind of strikes me, and hopefully it strikes you. Now, I'm not just saying, I'm not saying like everybody you see now, you know, hand out money, 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 because you're going to be homeless, you know, before long if you do that. I'm just saying, seek the heart of God and ask God, where is the hurt that he wants 
you to be involved in healing. Where is it at, man? Help you see when you're on vacation, when you're out and about, when you're doing a road trip, when you're visiting relatives, whatever the case may be. How can you better plan to be available, not only for a good time and being present with your family, but also for the hurting, to be available to where God is already working. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus loves you, man. And he loves them too. How can we connect that love? Love you guys. See you.